Hey guys, it's SB. I'm in the beautiful Park Cities, Utah. Look at that. And I wanted to welcome you to our YouTube channel. I wanted to let you know that we are supported by donors. So if you've been blessed by our podcast in any way, you can go to our website, thehandlebarpodcast.com, and you can donate there. Also on our website, we have really cool merch. So go ahead and check that out as well. We have cool sweaters, tote bags, mugs, beanies, you name it. And then if you want to submit a question to us, you can also do that at the website. So thanks for tuning in, and we love you. Bye. Welcome to the Handlebar Podcast. Hello, everybody. Elissa here. Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. Yeah. We are so excited for this next episode. Um, before we jump in, I just want to remind everyone we have a sponsor now, Audio Link. We are so thankful for Audio Link. Um, so basically, what Audio Link does is if you have a bad sound situation, mm. church, youth group, I don't know, worship team, prayer room, whatever, live prayer stream. room, live stream, mm-hmm. anything that you would like help in your quality of sound, check out Audio Link. Um, they love the Lord and they love to support the church in this yes. way. So we're super thankful that we've got to meet them and they are supporting us. So just want to give the love back and let you know if you want help, what was it? In your, your audio, audio drama. drama. In your audio drama. <laughs> That's it. Drama. We don't like drama. <laughs> Oh, like audio drama. Audio drama. Worse. All right, so we're back. Um, Aaron, Aaron, what are we doing right episode now? Episode with any boo. What? <laughs> Not any boo. Any boo. Any boo. Honestly, that's really any tender, boo. and I receive it. With any Ola. Yo, any Ola's been staying. How how many nights you slept on our couch the last week? <clears throat> Let's see. Enough. Um. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my bed. <laughs> no, I know kidding. she needs a bed. I'm just, kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. But it's just endearing. We it love any Ola. I love, I love my couch. Yeah, that's your couch. It is my At couch. At this point, that's your couch. That ain't my couch. <laughs> me, and, me and Nala's couch. That's it, yes. <laughs> yes, praise God for that couch. Mm. All right, we have a question. Let's draw. Who's drawing? Let Iniola draw. Iniola. Iniola. Here is the question. <clears throat> if we are supposed to be one body in Christ, Why? Is there so much church division with regards to race? Whoa. Brian, 25, Newport Beach. That's Yo, crazy. Newport Beach is your hood. It is my hood. I know Brian. I'm just like, I don't know Brian. I'm just waiting. <laughs> you I'm could, just waiting. You I could. could. Who knows? Maybe Probably do, walk past each other on Pacific but Brian Coast Highway. From Newport Beach. Yo, Joel and I almost drowned in Newport Beach. What? We were surfing together. And Wait, I, I almost did too. I think, and Iniola witnessed. I it. was observing this. <laughs> and those waves came in, and I was I I have never been that scared of the ocean until that day. I, I observed thought, this. I was uh, flying a kite and deciding I was going to move to Huntington Beach <laughs> <laughs> while they were almost drowned in the in the Pacific oh Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. I love that you were flying a <laughs> you were kite. You were abiding. I have you were abiding, and I'm over there striving to get out of the water just to it get back to the beach. It was the first time I had ever <laughs> flown a kite in my life. And it was flying. Like, it was wow. in the air. I was having a moment with God and the wind. This is what will happen to me if I move here. Listen. That's wow. Wow. Like, yes. I literally was like, wow, I think I was born to do this. <laughs> so I moved. <laughs> but starting a kite is so vulnerable. I, I, can I tell you something? I did not start that kite. A child did. It somebody's makes, makes son. Sense. Somebody's child did. Who was out there with us? They started it and gave it to me. Yo, that is true. That is one of the most vulnerable things. Starting <laughs> if you a kite. Watch someone trying to start a kite. Oh, that's oh my that's god! So awkward. <laughs> that's crazy. All right. Well, anyways, <laughs> back to our question. Who asked Brian? Brian Twenty-five, did. Newport Beach. Please read the question again. I'm read sorry. it one more we time. Got off track. If we are supposed to be one body in Christ, why is there so much church division with regards to race? Racism. Let's talk about it. Ra- I just want to start by saying, I'm not gonna say what you think I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say racism is trash. Okay. <laughs> Period. All right. Let me start okay. the timer. <laughs> let me start the timer. Here we go. 15 oh, minutes. Boy. All right. At the table, we have an Argentinian mm-hmm. or an Argentinian. How do you say it? Yeah. How you want to say it? Argentinian. <laughs> Argentine. No. That's, it's mm-hmm. Argentinian. This is a it's, Argentinian. Yeah. yeah there we go. I we think got we're an Argentinian it's a person. When it's a thing, it's Argentine a lot of times. We got oh, an African. African. 
Yeah, and then we got a hybrid here between Alyssa and I. <laughs> yeah, me and Aaron are... Half yeah, Hispanic. you're the same. We're half Hispanic. Half oh, white. so, so half am I. American. Oh, so you're hybrid too. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> hybrid models all the way. Let's go, yeah. baby. I'm, I'm not a hybrid of anything. Yeah, you're not a hybrid. I Eniola at... was born in... Ni- oh, no. no, from Nigeria, uh-huh. born in England. Let's go. Hey. Moved to Atlanta. Let's go. Then made it to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then went to North Carolina uh-huh. and Charlotte. And then went to Dallas and then to Reading, now in California. He Girl, knows. you are a from world... From <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, you're right. You've That's seen exactly it. what happened. You've seen America. I have. I've uh, seen this seen it all. nation. <laughs> all right, let's talk race. I'm a little out of pocket today, guys. I'm sorry. Let's let's talk race. Let's talk racism. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that Iniola is here for this question because you have deeply uh, informed me um, on this topic. Mm. No, I almost said over racism, but it's it's so much grander than it just the topic so of racism. It is so much bigger than racism. I yes. feel like I have learned so much from you specifically when it comes to race, ethnicities. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think if I look at that question, and I'm just going to start with what it says, which is technically why is there so much church division with regards to race? And one, because a church is made up of people. Mm -hmm. Like the church isn't a a building, it's it's people. And the reason there's division is because so many different people have different perspectives, but we're all sharing our perspectives in so many different ways. Um, And I think ultimately, you know, I I started the way I did. It's like, at the core, racism is trash. It's terrible. Because racism is hatred. And 1 John 4 tells us that if I hate my brother, then I have no part of God. Mm -hmm. So very plainly, like so simply, um, there's no no place for hatred um, in the body of Christ. But I also realize that the the division comes from such a nuanced place. Um, I think part of it is... um, there's just so many layers. I think on one end you have um, part of the body. I'm talking specifically about the church. So you have a part of the church who doesn't think that racism is that big of an issue right now. You have part who just, you know, maybe just don't think racism is real. You have people who think, uh, who see racism as real and don't know what to do about that. And I'm talking from from every ethnicity. I'm not even just talking about black, white. I'm talking about every ethnic group. Just kind of approaching racism, race, and race relationships from this place of like, man, how do we talk about it? How do we approach it? Um, and so I think the division, the reason there's division is 100% because we are people and we all have different ways of approaching mm-hmm. this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um I think for me, where I begin and where I've learned to begin with this conversation, I've my story when it comes to this um, is that I I feel like the the way I wrapped my mind around race started from a place of frustration and anger. Hmm. Um, I'll, I won't even say frustration because sometimes you say words to make things less from anger. Hmm. And I was I was angry because um, it was more people's misunderstanding and people's uh, fears manifested as hatred and as like kind of flippancy. And I felt like as a black person, I'm like getting the brunt of that. And so I was like how do I do this in the church, like in the body of Christ, big C church? Like, why does it not matter? Why does it not matter that um, people are dying in the streets at, you know, um, and being shot and killed? Why does it not, why is it that there are certain parts of the city that have more um, care taken of it than other parts and, the demographic in those cities seem to communicate that the powers that be care about one group of people over another. 
why is it that this is majority culture and then anything I do is exotic, new, and crazy? Like, and, and I found myself, anger was the feeling. And I, I stepped into the space of the Lord of intercession because I was like, I'm angry and I don't want to use my anger to sin. So how do I do that, Lord? <clears throat> and the journey really took me into this place of um, seeking the Lord about, you know, what is, what is the real issue here? And ultimately, it's taken me to the scriptures because I, we all have opinions and everyone has an opinion. I have strong opinions. But in the word of God, there's a day coming where we will all be around the throne. I think it's Revelation 9. Seven. Verse 7. Revelation 7, verse 9. Yeah. And we will be around the throne. Every tribe, every tongue, right. every people. What's beautiful, every nation. And what's so beautiful about the word nation in the Bible is it's a Greek word called ethnos, which is where we get the word ethnicity from. And so the scriptures have a value for the concept of ethnicity. Every, almost everywhere in the New Testament that you see the word nations, even um, sometimes the word Gentiles, it's referring to that word ethnos. And so God cares. He cares that every one of his children from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and every people group is around his throne worshiping him. And so I think part of that concept of division is um, is I think sometimes we want we want perspectives to be shared in a way that we all kind of agree on, and we're like, yeah, we all agree that this is this is something. And I'm not talking about you know is racism bad, is this good or that. I'm more so talking about like people need to talk to each other and talk about the things that make us different, as opposed to kind of building constructs. Of generalization. I think, I think, you know, I can speak for the American Western Church because I've been raised in America and in the Western Church. Mm-hmm. But I think something that I have realized and seen or even have had to fight against in my own upbringing of the faith is the misconception that Jesus is a white male with blue eyes, blonde hair. Like oftentimes, you know, you see the nativity and baby Jesus, he got them beautiful blue eyes, he's a white baby. And I think when it comes to racism, one of the biggest things that has helped me in regards to embracing other ethnicities is the fact that Jesus is a Jewish man. Yeah. He's not, Mm. he's not white. He's not American. He doesn't, you know, if he were walking on the earth today, he would not be able to vote in America. I hate to tell you that, but he's not an American citizen. He would, he's... Israeli. Mm -hmm. He's he's Jewish. And I think that in itself helps me understand why I have given my life to a man whose ethnicity and culture is foreign to mine. Yes. Mm -hmm. He would be a foreigner walking around in the States. And so, I mean, I read an article, I think of anti-Semitism as racism, you know, anti-Semitism is a big word to say hatred for the Jews. But I read an article that Hitler out of his own mouth confessed that Christianity was the most Uh, was the religion he related to the most. I don't Mm -hmm. think he was confessing to be a Christian, but he was saying, if there were a religion I relate to, it's Christianity. And I thought the the one who, you know, we all know what Hitler did with World War II. Yeah. Yet yet he was confessing. It was almost like in the name of Jesus, he was going to kill Jesus's people. And I think of the deception that has crept crept into the globe around just racism in general, race, ethnicity, language, cultures. And and I think of Jesus being someone who's a different ethnicity and a different culture than mine and my upbringing. And I realize, wow, I have to embrace the cultures of the world. Mm. And in fact, I think of John 4 when I think of this and I think of Jesus telling his disciples, uh, the scripture says he had to go to Samaria. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he had to go Mm. to another context. He had to go to another Uh, He had to go to a Gentile. He had to go to a Samaritan woman. Mm. And I think where in my life do I, have I, have I adopted that same reality where I have to embrace someone from Africa as one of my best friends. I have to uh, do a podcast with someone who's Argentinian. I say it right. Mm-hmm. That's you know what I'm saying? The point I'm trying to make is where this I'm is embracing good. other cultures into my daily life. Because I think one of the most frustrating things is when people are like, yeah, I'm all about diversity, but everybody in their circle looks just like them. 
or churches that say we're a diverse church and all are welcome and you know the all, everybody from every nation yet everybody that attends that church looks just like the senior pastor yeah. and i think that's one of the things that first shook me the most to the upper room when i started mm-hmm. coming is truly i looked around and i thought we got koreans here yeah we got black people here mm-hmm. we got white people here mm-hmm. we got mexicans here mm-hmm. we got colombians. S- s- colombians here we got you literally it, it doesn't matter what row you sit on you're probably going to sit by someone who's different than you yeah. and i think man <laughs> what a better yes. Yeah. yes 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 yeah. That is so good. It makes me think of the passage in Luke 10, um, the parable of the Good Samaritan, mm. you know? But what what um, is before the actual parable is it says, um, a certain lawyer stood up um, and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? And Jesus said to him, well, what is written in the law? What is your understanding of it? So Jesus is asking this man, what is your understanding of my words? And so the man says, oh, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says to him, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. And then this verse, it says, but the man wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Mm. And basically this man is saying, basically he's trying to see if Jesus will give him permission to pick who his neighbor will be to This is good, Elissa. And Jesus is saying, you don't get to pick who your neighbor is. Who, like everyone is precious to God. Yeah. And so then he goes on to tell this story of the Samaritan helping the Jewish man who gets robbed on the road and Samaritans and Jews hated each other. Mm-hmm. They could not get along. Um, they, you it know, was it, was, it was racially charged. Yeah. charged. Yeah. yeah. And so Jesus uses this parable that just shocks this man. Cause he was like, no, you don't understand. Like to love me <clears throat> is to love who's in front of you. And you don't get to choose mm. how, how much you love someone and, or how little you That's love right. them. Wow. And so I think for me, it's like I can see us justifying, well, this person looks like me. I'll yeah, love him a little yeah, more yeah. than this person who doesn't wow. look like me. You know, we can then tend to show up a little less, you know, and it's this judgment. We judge based on appearance where it says God looks at the heart. And so I think for me, I'm confronted with if I have chosen to follow Christ, that means I love who Christ loves. Mm. And who does Christ love? Everyone. Yeah. He has no, even scripture says that he has, um, he, he is no respecter of persons, mm. or that means he has no favoritism. Yes. yes. Um, and so I think for me, it's really opened my eyes, you know, to be like, I don't have to agree with certain things yeah. to love. But I'm also not going to let, you know, my disagreement or my own perspective um, cause me to shut my heart off from other people. Yeah. You know, or just, and really it has everything to do with my pride. Exactly. You know, where it's like, I don't know, I can't receive someone who's different than me or something like that, you know. Um, And so I think this passage just really stands out to me how God talked about racism, quote unquote, you know, to this man where he's like, you don't get to pick your neighbor. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And I think uh, as you're talking, I'm just, people are afraid of what they don't understand Mm -hmm. and what they can't control. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, like I'm having this thought, my friend is a real estate agent and he was telling me people can be the most like, open, welcoming people in their lives. But when it comes to buying a house, when it comes to what's really important to them, they oftentimes will go to a real estate agent that is their same culture Mm. or looks like them or somehow they can relate to because it's this like more like tribal thing within them. Like, uh, I don't really understand what I'm doing. So I just want to be with someone that I think I can trust. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the differences And I'm even having a thought, like Martin Luther King had this same question. He posed it differently as more of a, I want you to think about this, Mm -hmm. that 
like Sunday morning is the most mm, segregated. segregated time in America. Mm-hmm. And it's it's very true. Pe- mm-hmm. You can go to a black church, a Spanish church, an yeah. Asian church, a this church, a that. Like people have gathered within their own Ethnicities. tribes. And even Paul addresses it. when he, it, A lot of Bibles translate the word to sectarianism. But what mm-hmm. he's talking about is we all come to church together, but then the Greeks hang out with each other. And then these people hang out with each other. He's like, this is not the body of Christ. This isn't what God wants. And I think as I think about this conversation, there is a lot culturally we could open up. Totally. But I think it's helpful to zero in on like the value. Why did Jesus ask this question? Why did he like have tell this story? And I, I I have this one thought. I want to read this because I think it's the beginning of it. Um, it's the story of the Tower of Babel. Mm. And prior to this, everyone had the same language and the same right. culture. And it just says that the Lord confused their language and s- dispersed them all over the face of the earth, right? So there's this moment. One moment, everyone speaks the same language and they have the same culture. The next moment, there's these different languages and people are different. Mm. And over time, they'll grow to be even more different from each other. Yeah. And when I think about the, like, the great, the plan that God has from creation to the end, it's mostly a story of things being perfect in the garden and this arc of it's broken and then he's returning them back to the way they were. Wow, Mm. yes. For me, this is the only thing that I've found that post the garden will never return that way. Yeah. Because on that day... Every nation, try, he's not going to bring them all back so that they speak the same language. language. And he, there's Every something language. about this that God actually loves, yeah, that we on. speak different languages, that we're different wow. cultures, that we understand different sides of him and relate to him differently. Mm. So God is celebrating mm. that we're different, but his vision of different is different but together. Exactly. And celebrating one another, wow. yes. which yeah. is number one, the devil obviously does not want he us to do that. that. Yes. He hates that. He he loves be be different or have a multicultural church that has people that look different but have agreed we're all going to be this culture and we leave our culture that we came from at the door. He loves mm. the devil loves both of those things. Mm. It's when you start that's why a, a house like ours where when you've made the presence first and it's not about a certain culture or certain preference you know we get in a room and just minister to god we're not even really talking to to people all the time in the prayer room anyone can come because the presence of god has no ethnicity right but if you ask different cultures oh man i just feel the fire of god right now or you'll talk to another person oh i just feel that like they the, the different cultures are going to in, even interact with the presence of God differently and they'll, mm-hmm. and they'll receive different things from God. Wow. And so really, I, I believe the reason why, the question was, why, if we're supposed to be one in the body of Christ, why is there so much division in regards to race? It's because the devil hates when we're together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's God's vision for the end it's yeah. his mindset. That's of where like, we're going. Yes. yes. We're, when this thing is finished, when all sin is gone, it will look like every tongue and tribe worshiping Jesus together. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think with what you're saying, I'll say this real quick and then I know the timer went off, but the, the body of Christ, we're also called his disciples. Mm. And what was the biggest argument between the disciples who's the is who's, who's the, the greatest? greatest? Mm. And I think if you look at the body of Christ now, it's like we would like to say like, oh, I'm so glad we're not the disciples. We don't argue about who's the greatest when we're at our church. But yet if someone different walks in, we're like, "Mm." Mm -hmm. you know, and I think I love that if Jesus wanted us all to look the same or to model one expression, he would have only had one disciple. Exactly. But he brought in disciples Global who were completely people. opposite from each other. How do you have a zealot and a tax wow. collector? Yeah, in the same. Uh-huh. And they decide to love each other, not based on their own, you know, perspective, but they let God unify them that we oh, both love right. God and that's enough for me to love you. And I love how the Lord 
does that where he's like, hey, it's I'm not looking for one single way to be um, modeled or expressed. Like I I love what you were saying, Rafi, of how God loves all the different expressions because they unfold new things about him that my way is limited in. You know, and I learned from Iniola and I I learned from her culture mm-hmm. and I love the your parents have an mm-hmm. accent that is gorgeous <laughs> to me. You know, and when they talk about the Lord, no, I just like I ran into Iniola's mom the other day. <laughs> and she started like praying for me and encouraging me. And I literally knew I was like, Man, this woman has been with God this mm-hmm. morning and I needed to hear what she had to mm-hmm. say. You know, and I would so if I was prideful and I don't know, just it's pride, really. You know, I yeah. I would so miss out on things of God and I would create my own theology of and I would pick and choose what parts of Jesus I like and what my parts God. of him I don't. And anyway, I'm that's all I have to say. So, so give us a handlebar, Elisa. We can start with you around how how would you give someone a handlebar to help either embrace what we're talking about or help to uh, bridge that divide? Like fill the gap where we feel like there's such a space, there's such a tension, there's such a chasm between in this conversation of race. Like, what what would be your handlebar you would give someone? Um, I think I would say make a friend with someone who's different than you, and watch what God does. I mean, me and Aniola have been friends for like eleven years, yeah, and we we were so different toward each other 11 years ago than where we are now. I had to repent and be corrected. And she would have to say, Hey, this, this feels like this when you act this way. And it was like, wow, I, I didn't know I had exclusive tendencies Mm. because of the way I grew up where I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I have learned so much about God through Eniola and learning about her culture and how different and she's understood more maybe the mindset I've had Mm -hmm. but what's so beautiful is neither of us have tried to force each other into I haven't tried to force Aniola into my mindset right and she hasn't tried to force me into hers Mm. God has literally called us to let go of things that Mm. are not of him as we've gotten to know each other it's like wow like I didn't realize I was this way and so my handlebar is Make a friend. Yeah, that's great. With someone who's different than you, and if if someone, uh, if the way someone does something is like, if it seems annoying or frustrating to you, that's an open door to ask them to coffee. Mm. Like, explain to me like why you like to, like to do these things. I've noticed this, you know, and to to love them, and to get out of your own yes. head. And yes. see the body, the real body. Yeah. So that's that's my handlebar. I want to jump. I want to wow. jump in and say, that's amazing. And I do think that, at least for me, I can't imagine there not being a handlebar that's somehow connected to relationship. Maybe you guys do have one, but yeah, I think relationship is the answer to this Agreed. question. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Um, there's there's so much. I'm, my. I'll just throw this in there. If you look up Daryl Davis' TED Talk, watch that. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a TED Talk about a guy who basically, through relationship, took down the Ku Klux Klan in yes. Maryland. Through relationship over years. Mm. Wow. And he's not talking about Jesus, but I've never seen someone talk about race with more of the heart of Jesus than that guy. Wow. Mm. And what he was talking about was relationship. So I would speak to you, if you're a church leader, I'll do this. If you're a church leader, if you're leading a youth group, if you're leading a small group, if you're leading worship, if you're leading anything, because this this was about the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would basically just charge you to do the same thing that Elissa said with intentionality. If there's someone at your church that's a different culture that you don't understand or someone that's not at your church, someone that you know, ask them over for dinner. Ask to have time with them and ask what their story is and listen with open ears and an open heart Mm. and come as a student Yes, because the more we learn about each other, I believe the more space there is for us to grow in relationship. And I think that's the way toward 
communities that look like heaven. Yeah. yeah. I do. I'm, I'm just going to do it because I have to. I come from a house of prayer in New Jersey called Resting Place. Ugh. And I would say they walk this out better than any place any I've ever place. seen. It's beautiful. And it was all because our leader is not the most profound preacher. <laughs> He's not a worship leader, but he is a king of relationships and making wow. people feel the safe. king of that. Mm-hmm. And over years, he has built re- by relationship he has built relationships with people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. I mean, more than you could even imagine. And what you see now, I watched it. It was one by one. It was like the Latino community, some Koreans, some like lead, one by one they came. And as there was a safe place for them in at resting place, more would come that we didn't even know. And I don't, I, maybe it's spiritual, I don't know. But once one community was like, we honor you, yes. more of them would come. Yes. Wow. And if you go there now, there, you cannot say there's a majority of any, it is, anything. It is anyone. the most diverse group anywhere that I have ever seen. That's so beautiful. Like, you, every, it is gorgeous, like, looking around and just being like, mm. every single ethnic group I could think of. Is here. Yes. And I, I believe it's it looks like heaven. Yes. And so that's what I would say. If uh, ask the Lord for his heart on this, but but be intentional and ask someone what is your story? Tell me about if they came yes. from another country, tell me about the country you came from and just yes. listen. Open your heart and listen. Bro, that is my handlebar as well, is ask questions. Yeah. I was gonna say ask questions. Um and then I also think do a Bible study or pray with someone from a different culture. And I think praying is a safe place to start, but I think doing a Bible study with someone from a different culture, you actually will probably be uh, wildly blessed by the amount of deep revelation you receive Mm -hmm. from someone's perspective of scripture that has a different culture than you. Yes, And they start talking about how they can relate to scripture or just pulling out nuggets that you would have never been able to pull out from your own culture or your own upbringing. Yes. By the spirit of God. But, but I, I believe in doing Bible studies with people, you actually get such deep revelations that you understand the heart of God in a way that you couldn't without embracing their culture. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, ask questions and do a Bible study and pray uh, with someone who's from a different mm-hmm. culture than you, ethnicity than you. The my handlebar is that um, to ignore, get rid of, get out of the line of fire of all the chatter around this. Wow. Yes. Like just just get, kick it out. Um, the fruit of the chatter on racism, um, and when I say chatter, I'm literally talking about like the explore page on Instagram, someone's random TikTok. Um, like spiel, like there's just so much emotion, um, emotion fueled chatter on so many sides of the spectrum against for all these things. And if you read First Timothy, it talks about how um, the the chatter of like you know whether it's talking about mythologies or uh, controversial things moves people away from the Lord hmm. while when God's actually trying to get us to be aligned in a place of faith. Wow. And faith is the place that helps us to get to a place of unity. And actually, God wants something more than unity. He wants oneness. Hmm. Um, the body itself is completely different. My, he uses body to describe his people. And the body is different. Wow. Like my hand is totally different than my ear. They're so different, right. so diverse in wow. expression, but they are all part. And if one is not working, then something's off completely. And I'm realizing so that like, I'm realizing that so many times we talk about this as if it's almost like the ear is having a discussion with other ears about how important it is that everyone respects the ear when the ear and the hand need to remember, like, I need you. Yeah. Like, That's if so I'm good. itchy in my ear, only my hand could do something about that. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> does that make sense? Like, yes. and so I'm just, I think I'm, I, I feel so, the chatter is invading our conversations. It's invading Ooh. the way that we even love each other. And, yeah. and, um, and lastly, 
kind of going back to what we said in the beginning, my second handlebar would be immerse yourself in God's desire for every nation, every tribe, every tongue, yes, every people Revelation group. Revelation 7. That is not just saying become a missionary, unless you want to. But that's also saying <laughs> like, that's also saying like, give yourself over to the reality that what your world is not the only thing God cares about. That's right. He literally died for the world and the yeah. nations of the world. And the believer in Jesus Christ, I believe, has to have a grid for the other nations of the world. So one handlebar for me, um, my second handlebar would be pray for the nations of the world. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Like give yourself over to, to like, even if you got to take a, a map of the world and throw a dart and be like, I'm going to pray for wherever this thing lands. Morocco. And if it <laughs> lands in the middle of the ocean, just do it again. And, Indian you know, ocean. pray for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, pray, pray. the North Sea. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're like, I'll pray for the closest people to this, yeah. to this dart. But I, I say that to say, one, get rid of the chatter. Like, just, just violently erase all the chatter from mm -hmm. the racial conversation in your life. Because that's making things real weird and real sticky. And then two, pray for the nations of the world. Like, get your heart, take ownership of a nation in your heart and go, I will spend however long God gives me praying that his power and glory pours out on yes. the people that's of so Burundi, Africa. Burundi. Like, yes. you that's just, right. like, give yourself over and the beautiful thing is God will cash in on that, yes. And whether he sends you there or he sends people your way or just these beautiful things will begin to happen and you'll realize, oh, this is what the enemy's trying to keep me from. Yeah. He wants me over here finagling in, in this conversation about racism when actually there's something higher and more beautiful that I could be centered on, which is like, oh my gosh, Lord, you want me to see your glory revealed in the South African brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. So, so good. Yeah. And Yola, to in this episode, will you pray? Yes, I this will. This is also our last episode with you. So <laughs> just pray, pray for those that are listening, pray for this topic. Let's just yeah. end in a short, quick prayer. Yeah. Jesus, I just bless you. I thank you so much for your presence and for your, for your friendship. I honor you for inviting us um, into your story, Lord. And so God, I just ask that you would infuse every heart with faith that there's something more than arguments and conspiracies and, and, and made up stories about each other, that there is a vision in your heart for oneness and that, God, we could be a part of that. So I'm asking that every person under the sound of my voice is hit with a desire and a love for someone who they would not typically reach out to and be connected to. And I'm praying, Lord, that you give everyone um, just a longing to see your glory revealed in all the nations of the world, to see what does God's glory look like through the eyes of a Romanian? What does God's glory look like through the eyes of someone from the Fiji Islands, from from Canada, God, from Iceland, from Ireland, from Nigeria, from South Africa, God, would you just stir hearts even on this podcast, God, to long to see God's glory revealed um, in the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So good. Yeah. We love you. Love you guys. Hi, I'm Maggie Verlander. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm a listener of the Handlebar podcast. One thing I love about the podcast is how real it feels to me. I feel like every time I listen, it speaks into a lot of topics that I don't hear from a lot of other podcasts. And so every time I just am reminded how authentic it feels to me. Um, and so if you love this podcast too, you should like and subscribe and send it to a friend, your family, your crush, all the people. <laughs> That's it. Wait, no, no, no. Actually, I want to hear that part. Yeah, because I think...